Can I help you find something, sir? Hey, Clamato. Patrick, baby boy. Let me know if you need something, sir. This is us working together, Michelle. Yeah. Remember when that used to happen? Yeah. Where you became Sizzle B. Gone Break? One more second before you walk in. Yeah. On the rest, can we make it a little faster? Yeah. Or? Okay. <laughs> I don't know you, so it doesn't really matter. Well, obviously you do. And who the fuck yeah, is that? We, we have, uh, <laughs> some fucking yeah, French guy. On, on <laughs> Kate and, and, and us got together, and we, uh, you know, he would say things like, uh, "Okay, we we're, we're going to try to create real." You know, moments between people who have loved each other for a long time, and <laughs> and uh, you know, next thing you know, we're on the ground. I'm screaming, whatever. It's things are, you know, things get completely out of control. It's it, it, and yet it was it was a wonderful way to just find, to connect with Kate. My crotch is still here, just as you remembered it. Huh? Ew. <laughs> it should look like it's the first time I ever saw one. Ew. What? <gasps> oh. Here, here's my crotch, just as you remembered it. Oh, thank God. That was part of the process too. It was it was just getting us together and getting the the juices flowing. The, the, but I think something that get us attraction. going really quickly. We got to start to bitch about other people that were not in the room. Exactly. Oh, that's a very good way to bond <laughs> with each other. Yeah, bond over what you hate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, <clears throat> it was a good it was a good thing we did that though because there was a lot of different uh, a lot of different things we were kind of exploring. Yeah. And that is the Charlie's script was uh, it was very specifically written. Or like when, when we would say there was room though. That's the surprising yeah. thing that people might not think about is that I mean Charlie's scripts are as close to you know you know perfect as you can get, and yet there was room within this for our relationships, and there was definitely, there was room for my memories of childhood, and the, the yeah, yeah, row, yeah. row, row your boats, and all yeah, that. That's true, yeah. It all comes from my life. There comes a time in every boy's life where he's faced with, uh, you know, uh, take the BB gun and kill the bird, or uh -huh. whatever it was. And I can't believe that, you know, I, I couldn't believe I was in a movie that would allow that. Yeah, yeah. But it's so poignant and so real for every boy. I mean, I don't know, especially in this day and age, how, how many people can't identify with the feeling that there's nobody there for them or that they're too busy to pick them up or. Whatever, I think we all have that innately in us. We're looking for somebody to pick us up, even now. It's the challenge of every boy growing up. I mean, you're, you're either the guy sitting on the step going, I'm never gonna go up there, or there's a series of boys, one after another, going up the challenge. I would never go and challenge any, anyone. I would just stay on no, my you'd, own. No, you'd think your way around it. You're like the, the guy who's like, uh, you know, I can't really play basketball, but. <laughs> no, I would stand aside and say, well, maybe give the ball to him, and then this one open the whole Oh, <laughs> direct <back>. it. <laughs> I was just amazed when I got on the sets and, and what Michelle was doing with the Force Perspectives and things like that. It was, it was not only brilliant visually, but it was just so much fun for the actors. Okay. Should we tell them about the fight, though? <laughs> <laughs> that, th that day. Yes. That day was the hardest day on the shoot, and we were all really incredibly oh, yeah, tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Kate fainted in the hot tub, and oh, yeah. I got angry because Michelle wanted to shoot the shot because he gets, you know, really into it. He's like, 
get her out of there, pull the body out and keep shooting, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> and I was like, I was out of my mind. I got into the male protector role and <laughs> things like that. <laughs> and then ended up like, he's chasing me around, getting, you've got to get back in the tub, you've got to get back in the tub. And I'm like, <laughs> like this, and I, you know, I almost smacked him. Yeah, and and he was like, he me. goes, are, are, yeah, I turned and I, uh, and I gave him a look and, and, and he goes, are you going to punch me in the face? And I go, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> then he went back there. And do you notice how important this moment when you're drowning water yes, is? Yes, I understand. So that's I why got it. I was it was, it was beautiful. Moment. It was a beautiful moment. Uh, in the meantime, we, we at lunch, which was at, because it was the end of the week, lunch was at uh, 8 uh, p.m. We went out already this little short film. Yeah, the same he, night. He did this, he, he gave me this big present of being in my DVD playing this kind of silly character in, my, in the bed car. He, re he, he rigs a bed with a Volkswagen engine. Yeah. And uh, I'm singing my Elvis song that I created <laughs> called Pecan Pie. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all of a pecan pie. And so we went out to do this. In the middle of shooting, we go out to this godforsaken gas station in the middle of, of Jersey somewhere, and I drive into the gas station, and a couple of guys jump out and start fixing my bed. And then I drive out. Well, they hadn't thought about, like, you know, checking the brakes or anything like that, so with no brakes. So at one point, I was driving around the gas pumps faster and faster and faster, and everybody was there was just like, He's not gonna stop, and they just keep running. Finally, I had to take it out onto the road, and 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 the all the way down the freeway, <laughs> to the to the side of the road. I had to finally it finally conked out. I, 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 I would like to be the guy who saw you from their car when they were I driving. Know, I know. I know. Like a totally double surprise. He's a bad driving. Or there's a guy in a pyjama. Or it's like a Jim scene Carrey. from it's like a scene from Bewitched or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. And Gladys Kravitz opens her window and sees me driving by in a bed, you know? And to be able to, you know, come up with that kind of stuff, he has this desire to just do things differently, which is fantastic. Which is where I want to live, you know? It's everything to me. To be original. Okay, so you are witnessing a special effect done directly in cameras. Basically, this special effect is meant to um, help the audience to understand uh, how uh, Joel Barish feels when he's, uh, he's a kid, so he's under the table. Hey. So, I am in my dimension, in my size, and now I want to to uh, reach his uh, uh, dimension, which is half of mine. So I just basically have to work on uh, join him. Hey, how's it going? You want to be around people with ideas. Ideas and guts, that's, that's the key to everything, is just keep coming with the ideas. Some of them work, some of them don't, but you're not sitting there just going, how can we imitate what we've seen before? Yeah, you that's, know? that's true. Anyway, the teacher's coming. We did a lot of playing around. I mean, you know, you have to. You have to find things that are real. And so at times I was under there with crayons drawn on the floor when I wasn't supposed to and things like that. There was just a lot of experimentation. I, I don't know, it's, I find it kind of easy to go there into, into that realm. You know? I think Kate Kate was really brilliant. In she was moment. incredible. She was like super pretty. And, yes. And, and the deck, she, she was cartoonish. We weren't just playing like, let's get out of here, let's hide from this thing that's happening to us. We were caught up in what was happening to us and we'd get confused as to what the purpose was. And that's the, that was the fun part to play. It wasn't just like, okay, we know what we're gonna do, we gotta go through this memory now. It was getting caught up in the reality of the yeah, memories. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Because you can't Beautiful. make a movie when it's just a succession of turn of the story. And mm -hmm. a lot of time, you have to follow the rules. And they say, okay, this moment, it's saying that this character is going through that. This moment says that, well, now it changes. And now he, make, he learns his lesson. And what you want is to have that, I guess. But more importantly, is to each moment feel that it's just a glimpse of real life. I figured you'd show your face around me again. When you learn your lesson in life, you go, it, it's, never a, it, it's never a complete thing. It's yeah. never the end of the lesson. If you want to be with me, you're with me. Okay. 
We were constantly asking him about, you know, first of all, if we're in this memory, what, what is this just a pure memory? Is this, uh, are we alive? Am I lucid? Am I, am I uh, a voyeur in this memory? It was about, you know, where, you know, where the hell are we most of the time? It was so difficult to, to keep centered. I'm thinking of Kate because Kate was not really her. She was not Clementine, and, and, but yet we had to exactly. connect the moment, otherwise she would not be a real character. Right. But Charlie had find a great way to play with that by the fact you are in the memory or watching the memory by using different tense. Can you hear me? I want to call it off! It was so guerrilla, like the night that the circus came into town. Oh, yeah. And we were down shooting some scene in the subway, and suddenly we just hear, in the middle of everything, we hear, the circus! Like this, the circus is in town, circus is in town. They, they, they walk the elephants in through the tunnel, and it's the only way to get them to Madison Square Garden. So they walk through this parade at 12 o'clock at night. Of course, Michelle doesn't even think twice. That's a great thing, you know, he's, he just goes, you know? And uh, he said, uh, get in the vans, get in the vans, like this kind of thing, and everybody's in the vans, and we're flying through town, and we catch up to where the circus is gonna come around, and all of us, crew, cameras, everybody, are running down the streets of New York. They, they, they were <coughs> fucking fat. You have to they were moving. Run. They were moving. And the crowd was moving. So the whole time, we're getting shots for that scene. There's a paparazzi right this close to my head going, Jim, please, God, my kids, <laughs> like that kind of thing. The whole time while you're trying to be in the scene. It is the most challenging thing you ever you've ever seen, and, uh, it's but fun. Me and Kate, I grabbed her hand, man, and we're just running through this through these crowds, trying to get to the next place where we can get a shot. And there is my so favorite shot of Jim in the, in the movie, I think. Uh, it's when we we find this trick that you would do with wearing your jacket to play like an elephant. For yeah. Her. <laughs> yeah. And uh, she disappeared too early, and that was one of my tricks. I asked her, "Okay, Kate, go." And he's looking, like, he's really looking for Kate because he didn't finish. You I didn't actually finish. said, "Kate." Yeah. That's right. And, and you, he looks so lost. You look so lost because you couldn't, you didn't have time to do the elephant trick, and she yeah. was gone. And we use this look in the film. I know. And it's it's so, beautiful. It's so sad because you're like looking for Kate, and she didn't let you finish a moment. So what he's trying to say is he tricked me into a good performance. I remember uh, uh, watching the, some rerun of In Living Color, and um, at the end of the show, it's like Saturday Night Live, uh, everybody comes out <laughs> and dance <laughs> on the stage, and everybody's like super friend, it's like the best <laughs> movie ever heard. And there is one guy, he's <laughs> taller than everyone, and he's doing nothing but being lonely, and it's Jim. But I was definitely a, a little bit of a fish out of water when it came to the, uh, the hip hop dancing at but the end of the me, show. To me, that was what was. <laughs> well, that was one of the things why I wanted, uh, yeah, when I wanted you to, uh, to be Joel, like this loneliness. Well, for me, it was an emotional journey and a kind of reopening and examination of past, you know, brokenheartedness. And, and a, a lot of it, I was trying to speak to certain people, you know, and I'd improvise and we'd do these scenes where I'd talk to the, the doctor and, and we'd do like an hour of me just literally spewing my real stuff <laughs> without the names and such. And it was quite interesting. No, that is like a tease. Women became different, men became different. I hate women. I hate them. I do. You do? That's not true. <laughs> you do? That's not true. I mean it. I don't hate women. <laughs> oh, shit. Sorry. He's broken the I know. What are you going to do now? <laughs> Can we, can we take that tape to your apartment, or to my apartment? Yeah. Because I, I yeah. fucked up okay. the tape machine. No, that's what, we'll go, we'll go Shit. and we'll... I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So, when you're here, I really need you to show the heart. You know the scene when the two kids walk, and you, you did their voice uh, live, mm. as they were going, it's something I really wanted to try. Yeah. When you see the two kids coming back to the, his house, it's a very uh, charming moment, and they were actually here, Jim and Kate, uh, behind the camera with a microphone, verbalizing yeah. what they were uh, actually doing. Uh, and I mean, any producer would tell me, well, you don't have to ask the actor to do that. But to me, it was important because I think by you being out with them, uh, even if you were not on camera, it, it would make it sound charming. Uh, yeah. Unreal, uh, well, there's nothing like things happening organically on the spot, on site, you know? 
I really think so. Mm -hmm. When you do a cartoon voiceover or some other thing and you're alone in a studio, it's just, uh, it's not quite the same thing. It just, there's something electric about the people doing it in front of you right there. It's, it's beautiful, amazing. Thank you.